So let's have a look at the first little jig. Um, the first stage of assembling the timer is to solder the capacitor onto the FET onto the front. Now we want that to fit onto there like so. But to do that in the air is rather tricky. So we make this little jig, which is a very simple channel, just bits of bolter. Um, I think this is a 3.30 seconds or a bit less on the bottom and the sides just hold the FET nicely in position. You can push that into the channel, slide it forward and position the capacitor underneath. Now this stripe, it's very important that this goes on in the right orientation and this uh, red mark is a reminder of me for me to uh, put the stripe on that side. You've obviously flip the FET upside down, um, we want it to be on the left hand side of the two terminals when it's facing us. So there we go, we can position the uh, capacitor underneath and that should be just snug enough for us to hold, us, hold the component in position while we solder it. Because these are tinned already, um, I'm going to clean my iron. If these are already tinned, it's just a matter of touching them and heating what's already there rather than adding much more. Um, sometimes it's a good idea to add a tiny bit more. There we go, you can see that that's flowed already enough solder there and the two components are quite happily soldered together. And the next stage is to add the resistor. Um, now we've already cut this and shaped it to size um, but we want this to hook over the capacitor and it will be soldered onto the, the two sides. Um, at this point it's worth just um, fitting it over the capacitor and just manipulating it so that the um, terminals we've already soldered are nicely aligned as you can see. Uh, in terms of jigs, um, the simplest way to do this is to use a clothes peg, which I've just flattened the ends off, sawn the ends off. So we can just hold the whole thing together in a clothes peg. And you can see how the alignment of the leg of the resistor matches up with what we've already soldered. So what we want to do is we'll solder the negative side first because we want to add the Schottky diode in on that side later. If we do this first it will hold the resistor in position. Now because we haven't put too much solder on this terminal we probably want to add a little bit as we do this um, because really this secures the, um, the leg as well. This is one that will perhaps see a little bit of stress when you zap with the battery so it's worth getting a really good joint. The key again is to getting the wire nice and hot so that you have a hot solder joint. It's sometimes easier if the peg is glued to something. You can see here you just need to load a little bit more solder onto that joint. Um, this is also where you'll attach the negative to battery wire, but we'll come back to that later. So you can see that the resistor now is attached on the one side. The next step will be to add in the BAT43 diode, the Schottky diode. And we'll do that, you need to create a little jig that holds that in position while we solder both of those together. So here we have our next little jig for attaching the Schottky diode to the positive side of the timer. Um, I put it together, I'll show you how it goes together. It's very simple, you have a peg holding the timer on the one side and this is simply a piece of balsa wood with the grain oriented flat so you can poke the leg happily into the grain of the resistor and it holds it nicely. So it's just a matter of lining these up um, so that the timer and the diode can 
holding position in that terminal. Now that peg, you could, if you wanted, tape it down. In fact, we'll do that because we like to make life easy. So you can see we've taped um, the peg to the little base plate of this jig. Uh, it just means that we can move this around. We can position exactly where we want the shocky diode. And we're going to load some solder into this side on the terminal. There's not really enough there for us just to heat it. So we're going to have to add some. So again with a clean soldering iron, everything is being held together by the terminal on the other side. So it, it won't fall apart when you warm it up. Um, again just being ca fairly careful to heat the wires first we can just drop some solder into that joint and again this one is fairly important because the whole shocky diode is being held in position by this joint so you do want it to be a, a good joint it won't hurt if you have a fair bit of solder on that one so there we have it we can release we could, if we hadn't taken the peg down, we could release a timer from the jig. And that is essentially the basis of our timer finished. And um, there's a few extras to do. We need to add the wires, and we can add a few little extra bits and bobs and trim these as well. So we can now just tidy up the um, legs of the timer and, and add a little bit of insulation to the legs. Um, the terminals, the, these two are the zapper terminals. This one is the positive, this one is the negative. Um, this is completely unnecessary but it just adds a nice touch and it's a reminder of the polarity of the battery. So I've cut some little pieces of insulation and it's just a matter of wiggling them onto the wire and um, pushing them up. It's just colour codes, red and black to remind you to make sure the polarity is correct. The um, Schottky diode, the blue component, prevents you from reversing polarity anyway. The other thing that it does, which I don't think has been mentioned yet, is that in the Peterborough timer you can cut the motor by shorting across the two terminals. Um, this can be quite a handy little safety feature, but with this version, with the Schottky diode, you can't do that because it doesn't allow current to flow back through those terminals to um, short out the resistor. So it's worth noting that that, that f is a feature that some people may already be familiar with for the Peterborough timer, but for this polarity protected version, it doesn't work anymore. You can still do it um, by shorting across inside of the um, diode. Obviously, when the model is when it's mounted with the model, that may not be that practical to do. Just adding the black insulation. It's so slightly longer because the diode is in the way. So be careful with the legs; they're not always that robust. I've bent that one already. Once you've got the once you have the um, wire through, you can use it to pull. It's probably slightly better for the leg. These um, legs do tend to take a little bit of a. mangling in there um, on the model. You can obviously beef them up and use something slightly heavier if necessary. See where I've failed to remove the copper wire from the insulation, which is not so good. There we go. So having added those we can trim the longer of the two to equal and I quite like to just uh, curl up a little loop of wire using some nice little round nose pliers and then add a dab of solder. It's completely unnecessary to do 
this, but um, it just adds a nice little touch and it makes something obvious to contact with the battery. Having done this, just nip that into a loop. As I say, these are just little finishing touches, they're not really important to do. But if you're going to do a good job, you might as well make it look pretty. So we can put this into a peg again, which is a standard holder for the Peter Britannia. <laughs> and just add a little dab of solder, warm up that loop and you'll see the solder runs in and tension holds it quite nicely becomes a little becomes a little terminal we'll do the other one there we have a um, completed timer. The final step is to add the wires which we will solder onto this side from the, the terminal on this side and also onto the back onto the back plate.